Hey, say, bro, I got to send you a clock, man. <laughs> hey, 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 man, I'm here. I'm so oh. excited. I mean, the fact that the fact that Deuce McAllister is doing a show in Hancock, Mississippi, I'm like, man, this guy, Deuce, is just living the life in Mississippi. He, nobody appreciates Mississippi as much as maybe a former teammate, as much as I do, being from Alabama. Man, I mean, but you, you, you know, I know you have to take your 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 bi hourly naps, and you know, uh, you got to get your beauty rest. Bi hourly, <laughs> yeah, your bi hourly naps and stuff. But I mean, come on, bro. Man, my bad. I I feel like they said this is the time I need to be here. I, I'm here. So Pop, I gotta ask you. I, I, th- I think I think this golf was. Today. It's been a good day. Oh well, you 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 El Stinko on that golf course. I already know it. You ain't got no. you. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to Charlotte. I'm coming to Charlotte. But we got to work. We got to work. We got to work. You got to tell me about the golf later on. And I, 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 yeah. I, threw, your, I threw your door uh, your door hanger, your Alabama door hanger. I was at your house. Uh, I did a little stir fry at your house, and you don't know about it. But uh, I got to get the cleaners to come and clean it up because it's, it's a mess right now. But anyway, we're here to work now. Uh, 18 <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> and on another side. Right. 18 <laughs> years the SEC has had the most drafted players What's your thoughts on that? I mean, do you see that changing? I know with conference realignment, et cetera, happening, but do you see that changing uh, anytime soon? No, because the, the proof is in the pudding. You, you said it, Deuce. The SEC has been built, and the best players want to go to the SEC. Not only that, but playing golf today, parents that are paying for their kids to go to school all want to go to SEC. Why? Because it's the best football. If they know it, it's understood. If you want to have the best chance to go and play at the next level, I mean, you do it at a D2 school or that's fine. Like, we'll find you if you ball. Like, that is true. That, that, could, that, is, that, that is very true. But at the end of the day, uh, at the biggest conferences, the biggest ball, like in the SEC, that's where it's at right now. And it's the reason why they win most national championships. Uh, shout out to Michigan that just won one. And Detroit with the NFL draft. Roman, uh, one of the things, uh, the Saints moving up in round two to get Kool-Aid McKinstry. I know you've seen him play so much at Alabama. <laughs> we had him on Friday night. And uh, I know people that have coached under Nick and have played under him. So I brought it up to him, you know, him being a corner. I said, uh, you know, I know you got to have a thick hide uh, to play for Nick, especially at that position. And how much time did you spend with Nick kind of daily in that meeting room and he started to laugh he said well you were right on that thick high part but he said every day he is in that meeting room with you on the dbs either coaching you technique telling you what to do or chewing you out for what you did wrong he said it was one of the three every day that that was the way he handled it and he said i could accept it some people can't but he said, I could accept it, and it made me the guy I am today. Um, well, you, you start off by saying I've been watching Kool-Aid since college, and I've seen him since high school. He's from Alabama. So uh, most athletes that do anything in Alabama, we pay attention to those that continue that do. So uh, he's been a very high-rated, a very standout player since a while now, since high school. And so he's continued on that path, that journey. And he's correct about Nick Saban. That is Nick Saban's defensive back room. Um, period, as long as he's there because that's his baby. So he's been taught correctly in the schemes that he's played. Now the biggest thing for Kool-Aid is going to be, I I always compared him to, uh, and he's slipping my mind right now, I don't even want to talk about it, but he's comparing me to the old cornerback, uh, Corey Webster from LSU that played with the Giants for tons of years. That Because he's always on top of the route. As a defensive back, if you're on top of the route, those are the little things. I'm sorry I'm going to football jargon, but if you're on top of the route, you control the receiver. You're always at an advantage as long as you're on top of the route. That's the thing that Kool-Aid does extremely well. And when he does that, you didn't know how fast he was. He ran a good 40 times, so that backed up something that you thought. You thought you saw on tape, but then he confirmed you with what he did in the 40 times. So you love his game. He got, he got a little bit beat up through the combine process later on in the season. It's always going to be question marks when they can do that. That's part of the draft process. I thought the second move going to out the University of Alabama one and picking a guy in the second round. They haven't done one that high since me, so shout out to him. They did draft Vinny Centuri uh, in between us. But still, uh, I like the pick. I love the kid. Uh, the only question mark and the only challenge I would have from him from 
uh, pro to pro uh, would be is like at some point, and Deuce could tell, follow me up on this, is that, you know, do you play ball because you love it and you want to be the best at it or you do it for what it provides for you? And those are two differences. So figuring out that person in between will be what Kool-Aid will be. And the sky's the limit as far as talent. He's been rated the highest since coming out, you know, so to get what you thought was going to be at a top tier corner in a draft in the second round, you love it. So the potential part is boom as well. Well, here, And here's the thing uh, on the comment that you just made, Roman. I'm not worried about him on the first contract. I'm worried about him on the second contract because he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. He's going to have a chip on his shoulder yeah. for the first first couple of years because he wants to prove. And I, 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 I've spoken to a few people or a few people have commented to me that when you see his look, it looks like he's upset. And it's almost like, man, he wasn't happy that the Saints picked him. Nah, he wasn't happy that he got picked that late. It had nothing to do with the Saints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he was relieved that the Saints I, I, called him. He That's the closest he could have been in the best situation. Like, for those that don't know who he is or where he's from, I mean, he could have went to Atlanta, but does he really want to go to Atlanta? Um, I, I think no one's an amazing pick. Uh, it's always so good to have an SEC connection. And it's also he'll get to know the locker room that is the love versus hate relationship that is Alabama versus LSU as well, which is a unique experience. I did it. Um, it's fun, and it's always good to just, you know, throw a little road tide out there because we all know in the, the football NFL locker room, where you go in college matters. It's something else that the guys, uh, you kind of it, it, it makes it all common. I think that's the biggest thing that you know. You spend so much time around each other, you try to find something that hey, you know, I don't care where you came from, I don't care what your economics are. You know, w- once you get drafted, I want to know one thing: hey, can you help me win? And then let me find out a little bit more about you as a person. And that's normally what school did you go to? Okay, we can we can talk, we can communicate, and we can find out what what makes us similar. I think that's the unique thing about the locker room. Harp, I got to ask you just about the overall class of the Saints, and you know just your thoughts so far, and you know uh, a couple things that you think that they need to continue to do to try to improve that team. Number one, another SEC guy, love, 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 Spencer Rattler Pitt. Love it. There's no pressure on the young man to be anything but he has been. And the fact that it comes out later on that he got knocked in the draft because of something, a a video that he allowed to be in when he was 17, it stinks. But it still is the draft. And you're going to be in the best position you ever have. And what Deuce talked about, that second contract is where you really make generational wealth anyways. And so to be able to come into a situation where there's no expectations, that this kid has huge upside, uh, arm, made a lot of big-time pressure throws, especially under duress with not a lot of help around him. Uh, to be able to go and sit, learn the ins and outs of the NFL team and how to be a professional and play professional quarterback in the NFL, it, it's going to be an awesome opportunity for that young man. And, uh, and everything else is the Saints just continue to build around. And it's also about the Saints – from the inside, understanding what Mickey's knowledge, DA's knowledge, that, like these guys have won, all right? They've won championships. And I know they've been, Mickey was always a GM, but DA's now the head coach. So, but you've been around winning, and winning is an attitude. Winning is the way you walk, you approach your work, the way you camaraderize and be together, like Deuce talked about. NFL locker room is very unique, and we all have different perspective of it, uh, perspectives of it once we're outside of it. But once you've been in, you're in. And so you know what it feels like, you know what it is like, you know what it tastes like, and you got to build that culture. And it has to be cultivated with young guys willing to be hungry and get better, uh, a, a group of older veteran guys teaching young guys what it's like to be a professional, coming to work every day, the way you grind at it, the, the thinking, the, the little nuances that learn how to be a pro. Um, 